Red Edition, welcome, happy day. Here's some quotations about liberals. I'll give three of them to you. Here, are you sitting down? Get ready. Here's the first one. His men would follow him anywhere, but only out of curiosity. That would be for a liberal leader. He has reached rock bottom and he started to dig. Right, another liberal being himself. He has a wisdom of youth and the energy of old age. And I could even say a lot more about up here. I tell you, politically right is right and left is wrong. Here, speaking of left, we got the NDP for our American friends. That stands for social slash commie guy. He's the leader in Canada. His name is Tom McClare. He's always uh, trying to get press. And he does a pretty good job of it because mainstream media, of course, is a little bit left, do you think? Recently, his uh, recent thing, his latest thing recently, I'll get it right, he's upset about an editorial cartoon about the wife of the former leader of his party, and that would be Olivia Chow. She was running to be mayor. Uh, fortunately, she was very unsuccessful, very unsuccessful because she didn't score well at all. It looked like the right I think their definition of rights a little different than mine, but the right in Toronto, I'm digressing, uh, captured about 75% of the vote. Back to the topic now. And he's saying there was a cartoon in the paper and uh, the reality of prejudice and the hatred against women like Olivia is a terrible thing. How do you get that from a cartoon? I mean, you're in politics. It's kind of an open arena. It's a blood sport. Get over yourself. I looked at the cartoon and <laughs> no way in the world it was it against women. Hatred against women? Ugh, he should be locked up, I would say. Oh, that sounds like hatred. Calm down, because I don't hate anybody. Ottawa, and recently there's a, been a lot of talking going on about Indians in Canada. I mean, they should get me to Ottawa to help talk about it, because it's an unfair game. What's happened now is, is in Alberta, there's a band called Shushwap. They have 87 members who live on the reserve. 87, are you with me? The First Nations Chief, Paul Sam, he's 80 years old. He gets a tax-free salary over the course of the last four years. He's had... $4.1 million. Wow. The prime minister of the country only makes a little more than 300000 His son gets an average salary of $536,000. And guess where all that money comes from? You white people. That's where. And what do they do? You got a government inside a government. What is it they do? Do they clean the roads and things? I don't think so. All the money they get for the infrastructure comes from you. If you're white, wow, wow, wow. And then he goes on to say this, but we're not just a band. We're a nation. You're a nation? Well, then go out and get your own taxes and live your own life. They don't pay taxes, they don't pay GST, and they get money from us. Is that fair? Oh, it was in the treaties? Not so fast. The treaties have changed. When the treaties were written, a lot of things have shifted since that time. Nobody paid taxes. World War I came along and the government said, hey, all you white guys, we'll put you over here. Indians, you're fine for the moment. White guys. Pay taxes as a temporary measure. I'm still white, and I'm still waiting for that temporary measure thing to end. Okay, another watchdog development in uh, Toronto, Ontario, actually, but this news comes out of Toronto. The Liberal government for that province is saying, been a lot of noise here, and we're just newly elected. A lot of noise about executive salaries of government you know, employees running departments and things are making zillions of dollars. They get fired after being here a few months and they get a check and a shirt. You know, the check would be a half a million dollars, etc. So now they're going to set up this department. Really? Why not get term limits and things like that to protect yourselves against the government and get rid of their big pensions and things to create another watchdog agency? I think it's cheaper to let people keep stealing. Uh, just sharing with you. Here's a judge now that has said to Harper in Canada, you know what, uh, we're going to rule soon about the coverage for refugee claimants with regard to health care. Kind of looks like uh, it'll be kicked out and if you're a refugee you won't be allowed to get free Medicare. Kind of hope that happens but in any event it's interesting talking about health care. Just quickly a very good friend of mine he's almost 80 years old and he has cancer just got it recently. It's kind of a tragic and a sad story but that's not my point. My point is is what he said. He says you know our health care system it's all about and cancer in particular it's all about uh, early detection. Really? And he says, you know what, for a couple of years, I go to one doctor, then another doctor. You get old, all you do is get shifted around to doctors. A couple of years later, they finally say, hey, you got cancer. Well, you know what, had you told me two years ago I'd still be living, I could beat it, now I can't. Do you think that's a government that's got a mind? Uh, uh, I don't think so. Mindless. That kind of comes to my mind. Politically right is right and left is wrong. I wish we had a government and certainly a member of parliament in Canada to stand up and say, let's make it right. <laughs> I'll come back here tomorrow. I'll get a board for you from the right. See ya.